I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 7th of June, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today I'm recording the same one I recorded for the 1st of June. It is raining heavily. We have a beautiful thunderstorm and I'm trying to get a few of these episodes out because we've fallen so far behind. Not really behind, but I'm behind the eight ball and I don't want to be, I want to be able to get these uploaded for you. So we're going to today be filming in the same beautiful location because this rain is fantastic. We're going to be talking about how do you exchange money in Nicaragua or for Nicaragua, because here we use Cordoba, not US dollars, not Canadian dollars, not Euros. How do you get into Cordoba effectively? I see you right after the bump. hammock right here just in case people wonder what they're seeing in the uh, in the shot when you're coming to a foreign country it's often a confusing thing of how we deal with money so we talk about it a bit on this show how should we think about money how should we get money how should we do those things so today we're gonna to be talking about exchanging money because I'm told that on reddit a lot of bad advice has been being given out by people who have no idea how the system works and flat out lie to people probably because they're simply wildly confused and taking the advertising and repeating it from big companies, but it's possible that they also work for big organizations and are trying to convince people to funnel money to where there's big profits. But one way or another, some horrible advice is going on out there, so let's talk about how to actually do this in the real world. Okay, so basics. I don't care where you're coming from, you use a local currency. And it's not the one we use here, which is the Nicaraguan Cordoba. No one uses it except Nicaraguans, and even in Nicaragua, we don't use it all that much. I mean, most of the time, but you would expect us to use it like all the time, and that's not true. In the United States, if you asked how often do you use the US dollar, the amount that you use it is certainly above 99%. It is nowhere near 100. In Ithaca, New York, they use a different currency called the Ithaca Hour, for example. Foreign currencies or alternative currencies are legal in the United States, as in most countries, so sometimes they happen. Bitcoin is certainly used from time to time. Not very often, but more than the Ithaca Hour, that's for sure, but less than 1% of the time, so above 99% for the US. Here in Nicaragua, the Cordoba is only used something like 80 to 90% of the time. That's a big number, but that leaves a really large chunk of the economy operating in an alternative currency. Almost all of that alternative currency is the US dollar. It is not official, but it is recognized by all of the banks here as a semi-local currency, meaning every bank I know of allows you to open accounts in either Cordoba or dollars. You can operate in both currencies inside the country. When you come to the border, going in or out of Nicaragua. Your transactions are required to happen in US dollars. Those are your exit fees, your entrance fees, those kinds of things. It's not a huge amount of money, but it is a dollar only transaction. And that is partially how the country gets a small continuous flow of US currency in and keeps it from flowing out. They do need some for foreign transactions. So it's a handy thing for them to have. That's why they do it. But you can operate internally in the country in dollars. Many businesses list things in dollars. Rent is often discussed in dollars. A great number of situations, you can choose optionally to do any transaction, almost any transaction. You can optionally choose many transactions to be in Cordoba or dollars. If you've traveled a lot, you're used to pulling out a foreign credit card and going to pay someone and they recognize you as an American, a Canadian, whatever, and they see your card and they say, oh, local currency, euros, whatever, or dollars because they can sometimes choose on the machine and charge you in what they want. In many cases they can't, and some they can. Here in Nicaragua, they will always have the choice on their credit card machines to charge you in dollars or Cordobas. It's always US dollars, not Canadian, and Cordoba. <clears throat> so be aware that you often will need to specify Cordoba because you get slightly better prices. However, if you want to pay in dollars, if you want to keep things simple, that's fine too. You're simply paying the same bill in alternative currencies and many receipts are printed in both. So you can look at them and see there's no advantage on the exchange rate because if there was, you would look and pick the cheaper one. They actually give it to you at directly the same rate. You can pay the same thing in either. So the idea that you need Cordoba for most things doesn't even exist. And sometimes you could pay with cash in US and get Cordoba as change. People go back and forth. People pay mixed all the time. It's annoying, please don't do it, but you can, right? If you're stuck and you're like, ah, 
out. I got $20 US and 500 Cordoba, and the thing costs 30 bucks. Uh, neither thing is big enough in an individual. Just put them together. They will figure it out, right? They're, everyone's used to it. <laughs> Nicaraguans do more math with their currency every day than most Americans do in a week, right? It's a completely different thing. So they're used to doing these conversions without a second thought. If you're paying in cash, like I just said, you almost always have the option of paying in dollars or Cordobas. A few places will refuse one or the other, but generally you're gonna have the option of both. They'll almost always have a preference, but larger businesses won't even have that. They could care less because they have multiple bank accounts and they just put it into whatever one makes sense and they can always convert if they need to, but everyone, because everyone works in both currencies, everyone can work in both currencies. And you can just pay with whatever's available. It's really, really handy in that way. It's super cumbersome in others, so don't get me wrong, I don't like the system, but it is what we have and it does have strong advantages, especially if you are coming from the United States or Panama or uh, uh, Ecuador and you are using US dollars already, well, great, now it's super easy for you to think about how everything works. Everything is just really simple. From time to time, you will need to exchange money that you have in one currency into another. This is incredibly rare. Like I just said, there's all these situations where you can work with it and don't have to make an exchange yourself. Someone else will do it. But if you need to make a currency exchange, the option does exist. And there's a number of places you can do it. You could do it in your home country before you come to Nicaragua or transfer back after you go home. You could come into Nicaragua and do it at, say, the airport where they have the cambios, the money exchange booths. Right? You could do it at an ATM by using your ATM card and taking out whatever currency makes sense at the time. In that case, you're translating directly from your bank account through your bank. Your bank's actually making the transaction. They're pulling the logical money out of uh, the bank, making the transfer into Cordoba, and then giving to you there. Or you can hand, go to a bank here, walk inside, hand them cash, they'll hand you. Basically the same thing as an ATM. Or you can go to Money Changers on the street. On Reddit, the bulk of advice that people tend to give is avoid people on the street at all costs. And this is as reckless as can be. This is the official licensed method for doing currency exchange in the country. The best possible rate are the people standing on the street in front of the banks holding wads of cash. They are licensed and they are the only ones you're expected to use. Doing anything else and you're considered on your own, unprotected, and an idiot. So be aware there's only one accepted way in this country to change money if you already have the cash because you almost never need to. Again, I've had to do it one time in two and a half years here in the country. I never had to do it when I lived here previously, but it could come up, so it's good to know your options. So let's start back at the beginning. You're coming to Nicaragua, and before you leave whatever country you're coming from, should you have Cordobas ready? No. This is a weird traveler thing that I try to educate people about. It is extremely rare that you would want to carry a country's currency into that country. You want to start with minimum amounts of money, not cross the borders with any large amount of money. When you do cross borders, you generally want to have a little bit of your own currency so you're ready to return home, possibly a little bit of something like American or Euro currencies so that you have some generally broad ability to spend more or less anywhere not large amounts of money, enough money to get across borders or whatever. That's like it. Once you're inside a country, and it doesn't matter which, which one it is, right? It could be uh, somewhere in Europe. It could be Romania. It could be Serbia. It could be Nicaragua, Mexico, Colombia, Thailand, whatever. Go to the ATM in that country and pull from your checking account directly into the local currency and start with the correct currency. Don't transfer, start with the right currency because that's going directly from your bank and they're doing the, tra the, the transaction at the time. That is generally the best way to get a good rate on the exchange for when you're originating the cash. That is not always the best case. For tourists, that is almost always the thing you want to do because if it's not the best rate, it is generally super close to it. There are exceptions. Argentina, I'm told, is one where you never do that either. Always take out your, your, your own cash and, and do exchanges some other way. So Argentina is its own market because of the incredible inflation. Do not use any of this advice to apply to Argentina. Nicaragua is a super stable cash environment. We do change over time, but at a, at a snail's pace. And so everybody knows the current exchange. Everyone works from the same one. There is no fooling around with it. The exchange is the exchange. Uh, so generally here, you would just use the bank. If you're using tons of money all the time, 
you may want to research, is there a tiny sliver of exchange benefit by going to the money exchangers on the street? If so, do that, but only at very large scale and once you're gonna be here for a while. It is not a thing for someone who is here casually. Under normal circumstances, the people on the street are the only ones to consider. They will give you a nearly perfect exchange rate. If you go back and forth all day long, you will barely lose a thing. You go anywhere else, you go inside the bank that they're standing in front of, you go to the money exchanger in the airport and you change your money back and forth, it's going to diminish very rapidly and at the end of the day, you're gonna have almost nothing even if you started off with quite a bit of money. So it's very important that you consider how you do your money exchanges. And of course, a general rule is you exchange money as little as possible. In most cases, you will simply go to stores and do your payments in whatever currency you have accessible to you and take out whatever currency you wanna use in the future. And that is all you have to do. Keep it as simple as possible. Don't imagine scenarios where you need to have different types of money and switching back and forth. That's really not how it works anywhere, but especially not in Nicaragua. There's almost nowhere with the amount of flexibility that Nicaragua has, so consider that you really don't need to bring in money um, when you come in, you don't need to change things back and forth, you don't need to worry about having court of a long term, but if you're going to be here for any length of time, say a week or more, you certainly want to get Cordoba. I would get it even if I'm just going to be here for two days, but I know I'm coming back, so I will keep, you know, what, what if I have 10,000 extra Cordoba, which is like $300, I could just throw that in my pocket, take it with me out of the country, and when I come back, have some of it handy so I can go hit the gas station as I come into the country and I don't have to worry about grabbing a little bit of cash. That's fine. If you're in a position where you're leaving the country and you have a significant amount of Cordoba and you're planning on never coming back or you're really unsure, it could be 20 years, go to the money exchanger on the street, get it back in US dollars, be happy, and leave the country. You probably cannot get Canadian dollars on the street, maybe you can, euros probably, you're pretty limited. If you're coming from a country with wildly different currency, uh, either get US to work with, that's because it's flexible, or simply hit the ATM and take out what you need. Hope that helps. Remember to like and subscribe. Ask your questions, get down below. What scenario are you picturing that you're gonna need to change money? Why do you think you need to bring money with you on the trip? Let me know. Like and subscribe, I already said that. Share on social media, tell your friends about the show. If you'd like to support the channel, buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. That's in US dollars, but I'll spend it in Cordoba's, trust me. And uh, if you're looking for direct one-on-one -on -one assistance for relocation, whether it's tours around the country or help finding furniture or whatever, hit us up at info at relocatenicaragua.com. We'd love to talk to you and help you with your moves. I'll see you all tomorrow.